Today, I have a bit of a problem when it comes to project mark style engravings. I've had dozens of you reach out to me on YouTube, Discord, LMA, everywhere, with the same type of problem. You simply don't have enough height when it comes to project mark engraving with a 300 lens. You go through the effort of getting a 300 lens, and then you can't even use it to its full potential. Me too. Today, we're going to take a look at together at one riser option and see how it fares together. And we're going to get started right now. So the project that I'm having a little bit trouble with is engraving on some leatherette tumblers. Now if you've ever worked with leatherette before, you might know that it's, it's pretty sensitive. It's a sensitive material. And it can be very sensitive, especially if you're in and out of focus. Now so far, any of the projects that I've shared on stream or in videos have mostly been with a 110 or a 200 millimeter lens. We're gonna go up to a 300 today. I currently have a 500 millimeter tower, and I also have a 300 millimeter lens. Now that lens has a focal distance of 463 millimeters. Some quick math dictates that only gives me about 37 millimeters to get something in focus underneath that lens, not accounting for any other variables. Now I want to engrave this tumbler and it is 76 millimeters in diameter. Now that's not particularly deep for a tumbler. Uh, a lot of tumblers are actually even bigger than that. But the point is, is I can't do this small one without getting some more distance between my lens and my material. So since this is a shared problem that a lot of us are experiencing now, I wanted to find uh, an easy solution for us all, really. So I went ahead and reached out to Wisely to see what kind of products they offer. They came back with different tower options as well as a riser. Now, I could go with a tower, but I wanted something as simple as possible that would work for anybody. So I opted to go for the riser in this case, uh, if you go for a tower, that means you have to swap over a motor, like in my case, if you have a motorized Z-axis, or you have to rewire it. The alternative is the riser, where you're using the same tower you already have wired up, you're just lifting it up. So if a motor is not something that you have to deal with and you're using a hand crank, then that may not be a consideration for you, or it might be. Now when I let them know I was interested in picking up a riser, they offered to go ahead and send it over so we could check it out and share our opinion. Though this isn't really going to function as a direct review, it is going to function as more of a quick, speedy install to help anybody who is a little hesitant on whether or not they want to go one way or the other. Now this is going to help in determining of whether or not this is an easy solution for me and hopefully for you guys too, so let's go ahead and take a look together. We've also recently gotten a lot of questions about the leatherette style of materials, so while I'm not going to be covering the procedure that I go through when working with that type of material today, I will be doing a separate project video on that. So if you're interested in that, make sure you're subscribed. As with everything we do on this channel, we share our honest opinions about everything here. If I don't like it, there's nothing stopping me from saying so. Now, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons at the end of the project. Uh, let's get this swapped over. First thing I need to do is unbolt the tower. So we're gonna start by removing those four bolts. For the most part, at least, with the split style laser systems, this is just going to look more or less the same for everyone with four bolts, one on each corner of the tower. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and grab our risers and get them installed. Now, they're a quite heavy solid rod for each corner of the tower, uh, four rods, so one for each bolt hole, and have threads machined directly into the rod, ready to go onto the bottom of the tower. Those threads do screw directly into your base plate, breadboard, whatever you want to call it in this case. Uh, we just need to screw these into the laser bed and be sure that they're secure. Now they do have slots where you can take a open wrench and make sure they're super tight. Now just make sure they're bottomed out. If you screw them down too tight, they may be hard to adjust or remove later. The last step in getting your tower placed on top of the risers is, well, to put the tower on top of the risers. Once it's on top, go ahead and use those original four bolts that you removed to remove the tower and use those to mount it back into those risers. I suggest dropping the arm down low to avoid it from being top heavy and tipping over by accident. This will make it a little easier to control and a little more predictable while you're holding it up and getting it into place. To be extra safe, however, you can simply unbolt the four bolts holding the laser path to the tower 
and place your laser path onto the workbench while you get your tower bolted down. This means that it can't fall. Once the tower has all four bolts secured, if you've removed your laser path, go ahead and put that back on and into place. Go ahead and have yourself a snack and take in the beauty of your newfound focal range. Now let's give it a test while I discuss my thoughts on the riser as an upgrade. Let's start with the benefits of this type of an upgrade versus going with the tower. Cost. The extension comes in at a cost of $99. Whereas an 800mm Z tower, if you're buying one and you already have a laser, is likely going to fall in the range of somewhere between $160 and $500, plus tax and shipping. You may be also paying customs and import duties on that purchase. If you have a motorized Z axis and you don't want to have to rewire the laser for the new motor or alternatively disconnect the motor from the old tower and swap it onto the new tower, well, this completely avoids that. The last thing I can think of is physical limitations. If you're like me, where the height of your tower is limited by your workspace ceilings and the height of your tables, well, there's still an option for you still. Alternatively, if you have a manual Z-axis, be sure to measure and make sure you can actually reach the handle. If you're working with really high tables, that extra 100 millimeters doesn't sound like a lot, but if you've got a high workbench and a tall tower, you may find the limits of your reach really quickly. Getting on to the downsides. That extra 100 millimeters does sound nice though, if it will fit and you can reach it and have a use for it, then you might find it worthwhile for the extra investment. But Kyle, why would I pay for four rods when I can just set it on top of one of my encyclopedias I got for Christmas from my parents in middle school? While that is a valid point, whatever you might use to raise your tower, make sure that both the top and bottom planes of whatever the object is are parallel to each other. If at any point the tower settles or starts to cause the lens to dip out of parallel with the laser bed, you may begin to have inconsistent marking issues since it will affect the focus in the different areas of where the lens covers. Make sure it's very flat and very stable. Last downside I have for this one is, if you want to use lenses on the smaller side, you may no longer have the range to lower the tower to get into focus with those smaller lenses. You may instead have to rise the item up to help get things into focus. This means it did put my 110 and 70 millimeter lenses out of reach without a booster seat under those smaller items. So if you don't like the idea of using some scrap wood, cardboard box, or one of those scissor style lift tables or XY tables, investing in a taller tower to get a full up and down range if you need it might be to your preference. Riser or tower, whichever you choose, should be the best upgrade for your needs. I hope this information I shared helps you with your choice of upgrades if you're looking to use a large lens to engrave big items. Now, does this mean I'm always going to be using a riser on this laser? No. Perhaps in the future I might switch to an 800mm tower. But having that choice and knowing now is part of the battle. If you want to learn more about project mark or cylinder correction for EasyCAD or Lightburn, we'll also leave links to those videos down in the description below, as well as links to the riser we use today. Big thanks to the LMA supporters who allow us to dedicate our time to doing this every day, making educational content, sharing projects, and helping everybody out in the community. If you want to help support the channel and the community, links to the Laser Master Academy will also be in the description. Smash the like button if you found this video helpful. Leave a comment below if there's anything you're excited to see us check out in the future. And get subscribed so you don't miss out on our next video where I'm gonna actually be talking about the project with these tumblers. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.